to our midweek Hindu at home. I've got some announcements I need to make. When I'm saying something that I want to make, be careful about what I say, I tend to read them. Uh, last week, one of my staff members said, y'all saw only the top of my head because I read uh, the statements that I made. But once again, I'll be reading and you'll understand why. Many people may not understand that churches are exempt from the restrictions that have been put on us by our governor based on First Amendment freedoms. If that were not true, we would still not be able to meet even under Phase 2.5, which only allows crowds of 25 people to gather inside. We've also felt the need to be as safe as possible in how we operate as a church when we gather together. We've made major changes. We no longer pass an offering plate, pointing people to boxes to place their offerings. We're taking the temperature of everyone who enters our building on Sunday and Wednesday. We have sent children home from our virtual school camp because they had a fever. Taking temperatures is something we intend to continue uh, even if all restrictions are lifted, at least through the flu season each year. A recent article in the New York Times shared some interesting recent findings. Here are quotes from their August 29th edition, and I'll read here. Some of the nation's leading public health experts are raising a new concern in the endless debate over coronavirus testing in the United States. The standard tests are diagnosing huge numbers of people who may be carrying relatively insignificant amounts of the virus. Most of these people are not likely to be contagious, and identifying them may contribute to bottlenecks that prevent those who are, who are contagious from being found in time. In three sets of testing data that include cycle thresholds compiled by officials in Massachusetts, New York, and Nevada, up to 90% of people testing positive carried barely any virus, a review by the Times found. I'll repeat, this is not a conservative conspiracy theory, theory website. This is the, the left-leaning New York Times. It seems that the main danger for spreading this virus comes from those who are sick. We want to do all that we can to make sure that sick people do not come and make other people sick. We have tried to meet all the needs that we can during this pandemic. Many people are still choosing to worship only online. We rejoice at being able to meet their needs. Around 50 people come to a special service for those most concerned about being around crowds. This service is held on Thursday mornings at 11 a.m. We still have a 45-minute service that meets at 8 a.m. on Sunday mornings that has less than 100 in attendance. That service was designed so that people can come and leave before larger crowds come at 9.15. Now, I know people are still getting sick. I know people who have died from this virus. I do not take it lightly. But we also are seeing some positive data that ought to encourage us. For instance, in the U.S., hospitalizations dropped by 37% this last month. God may be helping this pandemic to come to an end in the near future. The American Pediatric Association urged schools to meet in person. Their conclusion was that children are in little danger from this virus. We've seen the need for children to actually be with other children. This is one of the reasons for resuming Sunday morning children's ministries. I am setting out today a new set of guidelines with our policies on wearing masks. We want to encourage all who feel that masks are helpful to wear masks on our campus. I will continue to wear a mask when I'm not standing in front of the church speaking. Out of respect for those who have strong concerns, I'm willing to wear my mask. We will let every adult Sunday school class decide whether or not their class needs to make masks mandatory. In our worship services, we will have one section of the sanctuary where masks will absolutely be required, the center section of the downstairs of the sanctuary. The side sections downstairs and the balcony will be mask optional on Sundays. The 316 Center will be mask optional for modern worship. We will begin two identical sessions of our children's worship, something we call Merge, on Sunday morning, September 13th. The teachers will be required to wear masks unless they are teaching at a distance from the pupils, but the children will be mask optional. We will do our best to maintain distancing among our children, along with taking their temperatures to make sure that only healthy children come to church. Our youth Sunday school and Wednesday night, night activities will still be mask required. That is how our students will have to be functioning when they go to school again in the near future. 
It would be nearly impossible to enforce proper mask wearing on small children, but youth understand how to live with masks. The exception will be in outdoor strenuous activities or outdoor distanced events. I've never walked through a more difficult time to serve as a pastor of a church. I'm sure that no one is confident that they're doing absolutely the right thing on these issues. We're simply trying to make the best choices possible. We covet your prayers as we continue to meet forward and meeting needs in this trying time.